beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. This video runs through my brew experience on my third brew with the Brewzilla 65 system, which was for a two keg batch. This video serves as an update to my previous Gen 4 videos and looks at new areas as well as the difference in batch size. This is all going to be done without wasting your time with waffle as there is really no need for this to be anything lengthy. Just a video with a focus on information and my experiences. So let's get started. Here I am finishing up the doming in process before starting the mash for this 2 keg brew. I have allowed for a final volume of 42 litres or 11.09 Lewis liquid gallons as a fermenter target in brew father to ensure that I have no issues filling two corny kegs and have little spare. The recipe that I am brewing here is for a 5.5% ABV beer and calls for a 9.63 kilo or 21.23 pounds of grain bill. This standard Gen 4 65 litre malt pipe can efficiently mash 14.5 kilo or 31.97 pounds of grain without the need for any brewer stirring to increase efficiency so I was comfortable within this for this brew. The mash itself was pretty much uneventful. I ran the pump at 100% and saw a good flow through the grain bed. I used the pit algorithm and the system was always within a few tenths of a celsius of mash temperature whilst running the standard pit algorithm profile so I saw no need to change this within the controller. The footage you are watching now has been sped up considerably in speed just to emphasise how stable this temperature is. Mash temperature is actually a common area of misconception for home brewers so let me just quickly clarify what we are doing here and the role that temperature plays during the mash phase of brewing. When we mash we are just interested as brewers in two enzymes known as alpha and beta amylase. Shown on screen are the temperature ranges that these enzymes are active at. This mash was performed at 67 degrees Celsius or just under 153 degrees Fahrenheit. So essentially our beta enzyme would have been active for a short time and was then denatured by the higher temperature. However our alpha enzyme will still be stable and active until we go past 70 degrees Celsius. These enzymes are responsible for breaking down the starches in our mash into soluble sugars so that our yeast can feast on them and turn them into alcohol. So as you hopefully now understand, totally stable and static temperature control for the whole mash is not required and brewing systems that show temps of Celsius or final levels with Fahrenheit measurements too will give you a more accurate look at mash temperature. But naturally this is only at one point by standard and you will see some temperature variation even within smaller homebrew batch sizes. Kegland will be offering Bluetooth temperature probes in the future that can be used in combination with the RAP system that will allow for an average mash temperature to be calculated and shown on the Gen 4 wrapped controller. Overall though this is not something to be super concerned by. After all commercial breweries with their huge mash batch sizes are seeing even further variation of mash temperature and their brews work out just fine. After the mash came the sparge and I started off by lifting the malt pipe onto its first row of feet and waited for some liquid to filter out before lifting the basket fully which made for an easy one arm lift both times. I've had a few viewers concerned that liquid will drip out of the holes on the side bottom of the malt pipe during the sparge. So here is some video showing how this works and you can see that there is just dripping underneath with this design of malt pipe working like any other in this regard. Here is a look at how things went for this two keg batch on the approach and into the start of the boil. This footage is increased in speed to not waste your time but you can see that we have a nice vigorous boil courtesy of the 3.5 kilowatts heating on this system which is of a new design compared to the previous Gen 3 heating elements. The Gen 4 heating elements are wider and faster at heating and did very well when compared in heating speed against other brewing systems in the market. The results of these tests will be revealed in my forthcoming 2022 brewing system comparison guide which, depending on when you are watching this video, could already be released. I set the controller to 102 degrees Celsius during this boil to see if the system would manage it and it managed it very quickly. I guess this was a given seeing as you can add two boil extenders to this system increasing it to 113 litres and it will still reach a boil. This video concludes my series of Brewzilla Gen 4 focused videos and it has been great having these units prior to release so that I can provide you with all of my experiences and lots of information in advance. The next video coming is my full comparison of Brusilla 35 and 65 litre units versus Grainfather's G40 and G70 versus Brutal's B40 and B80 Pro systems. 
This is a factual comparison of each system where I compare all of the important features offered to allow a very good understanding on what each system has to offer. There will be no one right system for everyone, but an informed choice is always better than an uninformed one. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!